Hey there, what's going on? Bessie here back again with another new video. And in this video, we're going to create a custom slick component using only HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript. All right, so this is what you'll be building throughout this entire video. So bear with me till the end and let's get started. All right, so here I've already opened my code data, created the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript file. There is nothing in the JavaScript, but in the style of the CSS, I've already imported the Poppins Google font in here, created some basic variables, and then down here, I placed everything in the center, I used this linear gradient background, and used the font family of Poppins right there, and yeah, that's all. Then index.html, let's get started with the slick component. So slick, this is going to be a wrapper, it's going to wrap the entire slick component, then another one is called a selected, selected rule. So this is the selected one, I mean this one right here, and then down here the options, which is going to be a wrapper for all of the option, and I'm placing all of the option within the label. There we go. And then this is going to be for UI UX right here, and then input type of radio, and an ID of UI UX. Okay, the name is rule, and then down here let's place the name of that which is ui ux engineer all right so that's it and then for the rest of those actually i'm going to use my snippets so i don't take your time typing all of those so just copy that and paste it right here there it is and then let's run this in live server all right so that's it this is how it is going to look like it looks a little bit terrible we're going to be fixing it in a little bit all right, so in style the CSS, and let's just go down right here. And first of all, I'm gonna get rid of all the radio buttons, so I'm gonna hide them. So let's say display as none. There we go. And then down here for the slick component, I'm gonna specify a width of like 400 pixels. It's gonna be 25 rem, and that's it. Then down here for the selected one. Let me just go back right there. This is the selected one. We are just going to say selected rule. So this is going to have a background color of white from the variables background. If I go a little bit up, this is the background variable. And then let's add a padding of 12 pixels and 24 pixels right here. Then add a border radius to mix the corner around it. Variable uh, will douse around it. There it is. And now if I go back, so this is how it is going to look like. And the next step is that we also want to show that carried down right here as well. So for that, I need to first position this one as relative. And then down here, we're going to get this selected. That's going to be a pseudo element, uh, which is the after pseudo element. Its content is basically nothing. But it's going to have a width of like, uh, let's say, 24 pixels and a height of 24 pixels as well. That's 1.5 rem. And let's add a background here. So the background from the URLs, I've already created this chevron down SVG, actually copied that from tableraicon.com. And then let's say background size is contain, and then background repeat, uh, it's no repeat. And let's just see where we are at. Well, that's not showing up yet because we haven't yet any cons added any constraints to it. So position this as absolute. And then from the top, uh, it is 50% and from the right, it's 10 pixels. Now, if I go back, that should be there. There we go. And then let's also position it right at the center here. So vertically, that's in the center. I'm going to use transform, translate Y negative 50 percent so this is gonna move it up half of its own weight if i just uh, move it up there we go excuse me that was half of its own height so uh that still doesn't look like it's in the center probably some issues with svg but now it looks right in the center and then the next step is also to create these options right here so i'll go back here and then target the options just a quick reminder this is the options which is the wrapper of all the other options in there so let's get the options and this is going to be positioned as absolute as well well from the top 
this use this call here 100 percent plus four pixels and then it's also gonna have this background color of background uh, and let's see well that doesn't show up well it does show up down here the reason for that is because this is within the slick component and has to be relative for this to work there we go now this is working perfectly fine and then down here for the option let's get all the option if you remember earlier this is the label if i go back this is the label which is option so this is going to be uh, displayed as block first of all so that it can accept some padding let's add eight pixels for now and see if we have to change it anyway okay so this is how it is going to look like and for the options right here i'm going to also add a border radius of uh, from the rounded here i believe it is six pixels if i just go slightly up uh, this is it 7.2 pixels actually so there we go and now go back this is how it is going to look like this also add a width of 100 percent so it is straight up all the way to the right side like this and that is it so now we need to add a little bit of interactivity using javascript decreases height so its height is no more than this and also add some hover effect we need to also animate this one as well and open clicking that this should get updated so a lot of work to do so far and now I'm going to go to main.js. Let's get this selected first. So that's document.query selector. Select it. And then let's also get all the options. It's document.query selector. And get the options. All right. So now we're going to write an event listener for selected one. So whenever the user is clicking on that, it's going to run this function and add a class to the options. But for now, I'm going to just comment this out because I just realized that I haven't added the active class to it. So what does active do is that it's going to actually show up this option. So initially, I'm going to specify a maximum height of zero pixels. And then uh, when it's active, it's going to have a maximum height of 200 pixels, which is going to be like this. Well, for now, you can see this is overflowing. So I'll set the overflow right here to be hidden. For now and there we go so whenever we are clicking on that it's gonna maximize this height to be 200 pixels so this way i'm gonna just uncomment this out get the options options dot class list dot toggle and add the class of active there we go so now if i go back and click it now you can see that the content is showing up but there are some issues that we have to fix so i'll go to here and first of all, I need to uh, bump this up to 12 pixels. So there is a little bit more room in there. And also overflow why this to scroll because we want all the items to be scrolled over so that we can select them, right? Cool. So now it's working perfectly fine. You click on that and it's just going to toggle between them. And also we need to add a hover effect for all of these options. And likewise, this one, it has to show that like this is a button, right? So the user know uh, they click on it. So we're gonna set a cursor for that right here. This is the cursor pointer. And likewise for all the options right here, I'm gonna add the same cursor pointer as well. And then down here, option, whenever it's hovered over, we're gonna change its background color to be option hover color. There we go. And now you can see that it looks perfectly fine. All right, so that was it. And then uh, let's see, I need to also update the, the scroll bar of uh, these as well. Well, what's wrong? Let me just comment this out. So you can see that in the demo right here, the scroll bar is actually a custom one. So that's what we need to achieve in here as well. So we don't want this to be the one that's coming from Chrome. In Windows, that's going to look even more hideous and ugly. So here, let's get all the options. And then we're gonna add this pseudo element, which is webkit dash scroll bar. Oops, scroll bar. And that is it. Then a width of six pixels should be enough. And then options right here. We need to also target this thumb as well. So 
this is scroll bar dash dumb so then i'm gonna add a background color for this one let's go with this grayish color and also add a border radius of zero six pixels six and zero there it is and now you can see that it's totally customized and the border radius this is zero then it goes six pixels this is also six pixels and it's zero as well all right so that looks perfectly fine and now let's also add a little bit of animation for this too so it it achieves this bouncy effect can you see that it just goes toward the bottom and then it's going to stretch itself up toward the top like so all right so that's pretty simple well actually that's a uh, cubic busier thing that I have to do right in here is that transition for all 0.5 seconds and again I'm gonna go to my cheat sheet right here copy this out and then paste it right there now if I go back there we go so we achieved that as well all right so now we need to do one more thing that uh, well you can see that this is a little bit different the style of this when it's over over then there is a little bit of the padding in this parent uh, container so that's what we need to achieve as well so i'm gonna add this padding of eight pixels let's see if that's gonna solve it yeah we need to also add a little bit of rounded corner for the option as well so let's go with the border radius of four pixels in here and then go down and that's it so this looks perfectly fine all right so the well well look at this this looks so terrible that's due to the padding that we just added earlier right here that's due to this one so what you could do is to set its opacity to be zero but when we are hovering on that this should be one but if you don't want that so you just have to remove this padding now see yeah there it is so it looks perfectly fine so then right here I'm gonna go to the main.js and then uh, when I click on this any of these then that that one should be reflected in the selected one right at the very top in here so how you can do that is getting all the option list here document.query selector all get all the option and then down here let's say option list whoops and then for each of the option let's say that uh, when any of these options are clicked so we're gonna add this click event listener so when they are clicked over then uh, there is the selected dot inner html that will be equal to excuse me this option dot query selector well when i click on any of these in this case if i click on front end engineer then I want the text of it, which is within and span, to be replaced with this select rule. Just simple as that. This text should be replaced with that. All right. So going back to here, this is what we are doing. So span dot inner inner text. There it is. And if I go back now, click on front end engineer, and you can see that the changes are reflected back in here at the very top. And the final step is that we need to remove this active class so i'll just copy that and remove it from here and that is it so now i click it front end engineer and that is gonna go away with it too all right so yeah this is looking perfectly fine all right so the last step is well animating this little carrot down so that should be animated as well well that's pretty simple all you have to do is to first add um, where is the selected so first of all we're going to add a little bit of transition like 0.4 seconds and then uh, down here when the options is active all right when the options is active but in here i need to change the structure of html tag because when this options is getting the class of active then it, i want this adjacent element which is this selected i'm going to add it right here so then i'm gonna target it all right so back in here so options dot active when that's active get this selected and is b4 pseudo element is that before or after yeah that's after so then we're gonna have to transform and rotate this on x-axis 180 degrees 
but also remember that you have to reserve this translate y as well all right but you don't want to translate y again to negative 50 percent that will be a total of negative 100 percent that's why you have to go with 50 percent and now let's see there we go all right so that was it for this video everyone i hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell notification for more such videos like this and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you for watching the video